Hey y'all, this is BG Codes and I am Brad Garropy. In the previous video, we separated our configuration file into a production and development configuration file. In this video, we'll learn how to define environment variables with different values for each of those environments. As always, I'll be using some starter code that's stored on GitHub and I'll put the link in the description below. Let's get started. So for the sake of this example, Let's assume that you have two different API backends and they have different URLs. One is located at bradgarropy.com and another one might be located at dev.bradgarropy.com. When we build our production bundle and our development bundle, we want to point at those specific API backends and we can use environment variables to help with that. The environment variable name stays the same, but the value differs between environments. And luckily Webpack has a plugin that can help us with this. So we're going to make changes to our development configuration and our production configuration to use this plugin to define different values for the same environment variable. First thing we're going to do is we're going to import this plugin. It's called environment plugin, and that's going to come directly from Webpack itself. We don't need to install any other dependencies. And now we're going to specify this in the plugins array and create a new environment plugin, which takes an object as an argument. And this object is essentially a list of environment variables that you would like to use. So you can name this whatever you'd like. We're going to call it API. And because we're in the development configuration, let's use dev.bradgarropy.com as our environment variable value. Now under the hood, what this is doing is it says, use the value of process.env.api if it exists, but if not, use this string as a fallback. So this package is kind of cool because it works with existing environment variables or custom ones. So in order to see if this works, let's go to our index file and just log out process.env.api. And we'll run npm start, which will start our project in development mode. And we should expect to see dev.bradgarropy.com. And look at that. When I reload, we do indeed see dev.bradgarropy.com. So what happened here was the environment plugin looked for instances of process.env.api in our code and replaced it with either the value of that environment variable if it exists or this as a fallback. Now let's do the same thing for our production environment. We'll import the plugin from Webpack, define our plugins array and create a new environment plugin specifying the API endpoint of our choosing. In this case, instead of being dev.bradgarropy.com, we'll use bradgarropy.com, let's say, as the API endpoint. Now, this is cool because our code can use the exact same environment variable, but get a different value depending on what build configuration you used. So let's swap this around a little bit. Let's change our start script to use the production configuration and we'll restart the server. And because we're using the production configuration, we would expect bradgarropy.com to show up as process.env.api. Let's see, we're gonna reload and here we go. Hello world and bradgarropy.com is that value. So this is Super useful when you're doing things like using different backends or API keys or database URLs in your different environments. You essentially extend the common configuration and just use the environment plugin to define these different environment variables in different environments where your code can just use the same variable name throughout. 
So thanks for sticking with me in this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about using loaders to process different file types within Webpack. I'll see you there.